Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen, and I'm the pastor of a church called Graffiti, Graffiti Fellowship. We're located in the Coney Island section of Southern Brooklyn, which of course is one of the boroughs of New York City, and it is my privilege to welcome you to today's daily devotion. Uh, our daily devotion is simply a series of videos. We post them five days a week, Monday through Friday. And uh, they're just intended to be a tool to help you incorporate, include a little bit of God's Word into your daily routine. Okay, so we're reading through books uh, just start to finish. We started with Matthew, and so there's a playlist of all the chapters of uh, Matthew. Each chapter is a separate video, and then Mark, and then Luke, and we're halfway through John now. We're reading John chapter 11 today. And uh, this chapter is longer than the preceding chapter. This is 57 verses. And uh, here we see a very famous, a very well-known story of uh, the raising of a man called Lazarus, who was raised from the dead. Uh, many who haven't read the Bible will have maybe some awareness of that story. Maybe you've heard it. Uh, and then uh, that's a pretty long subsection. And then the Probably the latter third of the chapter is a, a, a plot to kill Jesus. And so those two sections in this chapter, again, it's almost 60 verses. So let's begin. John chapter 11, verse 1 says, A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick, so the two sisters sent a message to Jesus, telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. And so, although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. And finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But his disciples objected, Rabbi, only a few days ago the people in Judea were trying to stone you. That means to throw rocks at you until you die. Are you going there again? They were trying to kill you. Why are you going back there? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight in every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of this world. But at night, there's danger of stumbling because they have no light. And then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I'll go and wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he's sleeping, he'll soon get better. And they thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping. But Jesus meant that he had died. So he told them plainly, listen, <laughs> Lazarus is dead. And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas, nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let's go to, let's die with Jesus. Thomas gets a bad rap, unfairly, I think. Um, but I love what Thomas says. He says, come on, let's go. He's crazy. He's going back to this place where they were trying to kill him. Let's go die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the people had come to console Martha and Mary in their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. And she said, yes, I, I know he'll rise when everyone else rises at the last day. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who believes in me and lives in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I've always believed you're the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Then she returned to Mary. She called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, The teacher's here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha met him. And when the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep. 
So they followed her there. And when Mary arrived, she saw Jesus. She fell at his feet and she said, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him and he was deeply troubled. Where have you put him? He asked them. Now this anger here, I don't believe in any way that Jesus is angry at the people. He's not angry at these sisters who are mourning the loss of the, their brother. And he's not angry at, at the other mourners there. I believe Jesus is angry at death. He's angry at pain and suffering and he's going to do something about it. And he says, where is he? They told him, Lord, come and see. And then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, See how much he loved him. But some said, This man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb. A cave of the stone rolled across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he, he's been dead for four days. The, the smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you? that you'll see God's glory if you believe. So they rolled the stone aside, and then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. And then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. His hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a headcloth, and Jesus told them, Unwrap him and let him go. Many of the people who were with Mary believed in Jesus when they saw this happen. That'll do it. But some went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done, and the leading priests and the Pharisees called the high council together. What are we going to do? They asked each other. This man certainly performs many miraculous signs, and if we allow him to go on like this, soon everyone will believe in him. Then the Roman army will come and destroy both our temple and our nation. Caiaphas, who was the high priest at the time, said, You don't know what you're talking about. You don't realize that it's better for you that one man should die for the people than for the whole nation to be destroyed. He didn't say this on his own. As high priest at the time, he was led to prophesy that Jesus would die for the entire nation. And not only for that nation, but to bring together and unite all the children of God scattered around the world. <clears throat> From that time on, the Jewish leaders began to plot Jesus' death. And as a result, Jesus stopped his public ministry among the people and left Jerusalem. He went to a place near the wilderness, to the village of Ephraim, and stayed there with his disciples. It was now almost time for the Jewish Passover celebration, and many people from all over the country arrived in Jerusalem several days early so they could go through the purification ceremony before Passover began. They kept looking for Jesus. But as they stood around the temple, they said to each other, What do you think? He won't come here for Passover, will he? Meanwhile, the leading priests and the Pharisees had publicly ordered that anyone seeing Jesus must report it immediately so they could arrest him. That concludes John chapter 11, and uh, obviously a very powerful uh, account of a great miracle of Jesus and the raising of Lazarus. And, uh, you know, it's striking how many who witnessed this understood that this power could only come from God, and they believed in Jesus. And then many others were not only offended by it, but so offended, they began to plot his death. Uh, and we still see that in people's lives today. Some people are drawn to Jesus when they discover the truth of who He is, and, and some people are deeply offended. And I believe God gives us that choice. He gives us that freedom. Uh, thanks so much for participating in this chapter. Hope you've been blessed. Share this with anybody who might also be blessed. Hope you'll join us again next time for John chapter 12. God bless you.